Was there a postal system on Roke 300 years ago? We used carrier pigeons to transport messages back and forth in my time. Well, not just pigeons. People used other animals, too? Yes, such as... <laughs> Sorry. I remember Millie tried to use a cat one time. I don't know why. I guess she really loves cats. How did that go? Terrible. The cat went missing for a few days, and we never did find out what happened to that letter. It doesn't take a genius to figure that what happened. But then again, she's kind of loopy that way sometimes. Aw, it would have been nice if it worked. What? You want to carry your cat? That's weird. What? I have a feeling that someone's talking about me behind my back. Oh well, never mind. We need to find a town, don't we? Oh, right. Yeah. I know you've got your symbology or whatever, but I'm totally defenseless here, with no equipment, no weapons, nothing. Don't worry. I'll help you pick out something to impress the ladies once we find a town. Uh... thanks. Penny for your thoughts. Oh, I'm sending a prayer to the gods in their holy sanctuary. Sanctuary? Oh, right. That's how your people refer to outer space, isn't it? Well, I'm sorry if this is a touchy subject, but what if I were to tell you that you were in outer space, or what you call your holy sanctuary would you still believe in your gods you see to people like us religion or the existence of gods they're all just old relics that we've let go of centuries ago i know you're from a world where everyone's far more advanced than us ronix but i don't think that makes you right how do you mean there's more to life than just what we can see or hear. Don't you think so? I suppose so, yes. From our perspective, the fact that Roke exists at all, I mean, it almost seems like some sort of crazy fairy tale. Are you saying you don't believe in this world, Ronix? After everything that happened to Dorn and my father, you're telling me it's all just a fantasy? You have no idea how I wish it were all just a dream. Uh, no, no, I, 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 I didn't mean it like that. I was just trying to say, you know, I just can't believe that I'm actually in this fantasy world. Well, in that case, why don't you try learning the art of symbology? I only know how to use healing symbology, though. Are you serious? Totally. I mean, maybe you think this power is something only we can take advantage of. But if you learned it, then maybe you'd be able to believe for yourself. I mean, the whole world is connected, united as one. Yes, you're probably right. <laughs> of course I am. What are you looking at? Huh? Oh, nothing. Those earrings there are pretty nice. You think so too? I was just thinking they fit me pretty well. How about I buy them for you, Elia? I bet they would look really good on you. Oh, Roddick. Don't you think you're saying that to the wrong girl? Huh? Oh, I wasn't... I didn't mean anything like that. <laughs> well, I bet Millie would have been delighted to hear that from you. But if you're offering, I certainly am willing to take you up on it. All right. Let me borrow these for a moment. I'll go ask the shopkeeper about them.
Thank you, Roddick. <laughs> Did you find something else, Elia? No, not at all. Unless you wanted to give me another present, Roddick. What was that about a present? Oh, uh, no, it's, it's n nothing. Uh-huh. I'm sure he didn't mean anything by it. You stay out of this, Ilya. Okay. Why are you trying to hide this from me? No, I, I uh... Whoa, man, Roddick, you're in a heap of trouble. How are you gonna get out of this one? The suspense, I can't take it anymore. into the item shop and snickering to himself. What a creep. Rodic! Yo, Rodic! Come here a second, would you? Huh? Sure. friend in need and all that. Hey, Sias, I want to talk to you about Roddick. I wish I could do something about him. He's just so insensitive. Yeah, I hear you there. Now that I think about it, I really hate it that he's always so nice to other women. Oh... Uh, I, uh, I better keep my distance. as a present before we were reunited, Captain. I... I see. Oh, come on, Captain. I figured you'd at least have more to say about it than just that. You're no fun at all. What? It was Roddick. Roddick? He gave those to you? Look, I told you, he didn't mean anything. Sometimes a gift's just a gift. Yeah? Well, I suppose so. Hmm, erotic. No, it couldn't be. But what if it is? Oh, no. No, no, calm down, Ronix. Times like these, you gotta keep cool. staring at this mural. Doesn't it look pretty mysterious to you? I wonder what the artist had in mind. The tool shop owner son drew it, said he was inspired by the artwork he saw in some old race ruins. Old race? You never heard of them? They're all dead now, supposedly, but they're a group of people who used to be, like, ultra-powerful. There are stories about him traveling to the stars, living for hundreds of years, that sort of thing. Hundreds of years? Wow. Well, you know how legends get exaggerated as the years go on. I mean, come on, how the hell could they fly all the way to the stars? So in the end, you really don't know much about them at all, right, Sius? 
Ah, stuff it. What do I look like, some kind of scholar? I don't like weirdos who think they know everything. <laughs> Man, this hits the spot. Yo, Roddick! You want some too? Huh? Wait, I... Oh man, you are missing out on some good stuff, let me tell you. so sure about this oh come on drink it drink it wait i yo barkeep another here right around here what was that you punk say that one more time and i'll kick you out of here I say you should stop acting like you own a place when you plainly don't have the muscles to swat a mosquito, old man. You're a dead man! <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? No! Not in my bar! See us! It's Ruddick to the rescue! My bar! Get a hold of yourselves. I apologize. Don't you ever encourage him like this again, Roddick. Sorry. What's up, Sius? You're staring into space. Huh? Oh, I was just thinking how much Astral has changed. Fia's men really got a fire in them these days. Like they're more enthusiastic now. Or just more than they were when I was around, at least. Seeing Captain Fia in action. It really inspires me to want to give my all for her. You got that right. With Lord Lias fallen and his son Sius out of the country, Captain Fee is the only person who can lead the Astral Night Corps. That's all the more reason we need to support her. We'll need to train harder than ever. And we'll need to protect Astral more fervently than ever before. Yeah, you're right. Still, today was a hell of a day, huh? Remember what Captain Fia said to us? Oh, yeah. She was all incompetent, and you embarrass me, and damn you all! Man, there's something about Captain Fia's voice. I can feel my spine tingle whenever she chews me out. You too? Oh, it's like... Whenever she's yelling at someone else, I uh, think about how wonderful it'd be if it was me instead. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Captain Thea. I'd love it if she were to actually beat me up someday. Wow, you 
must be one of those feather folk I heard about. You're so handsome. Hold on, you two. Quit stalking him. Knock it off! This ain't a circus! Oh, come on! We just wanted to look! Thank you. You really helped me out there. I thought I was used to that sort of treatment by this point. But with that many people at once, I still felt a little helpless. Yeah, I can't blame you. Sometimes I think it would be great if I could just get rid of my wings. But this is the body my parents gave me. envious of you yes they saw me as a normal feather folk and that makes me really happy is there any point in fighting just for the sake of fighting Spilling your own blood in a place like this. It's only natural for people to strive to become stronger. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You have a point. But tell me, Roddick, why do you want to become stronger? Well, I suppose it's because there are things I want to protect. Sometimes words just aren't enough against violence. Perhaps you can say that power itself is irrational violence. If more strength is the only thing that can overcome strength itself, then it leads to an endless chain of escalation. And that is disturbing to me. You're a symbologist, Yoshua. Do you find the power you wield to be something menacing? I don't want to fight needless battles, even if they are with my enemies. The power I have is merely a tool to help me find my sister. But even if you don't fight, Yoshua, it's not like power is ever going to go extinct in this world. So wouldn't it be best to pass on to others the best way to harness that power? That's the way my father taught me anyway. Did he? He sounds like a sensible father. straight from the finest blacksmith in all of the Western world. Sir, who do you think I am? Some kind of blithering idiot? Don't give me that finest blacksmith nonsense. You actually think someone would be boneheaded enough to buy this worthless hunk of metal? If someone really is that stupid, I'd like to shake his hand and congratulate him. Something the matter? Are you the knight who fought in the demonic wars with Lord Lias? That's a very old tale. I prefer not to bring it up. I've always wanted to be one of those fighting against the monsters. I want to swing my sword for a just cause. 
Is that so? Well, would you like some friendly advice from this old timer? Yes, sir, please. Rule number one is to survive. Don't be obsessed with winning quick glory on the field. You'll find ample time to prove yourself sooner or later. Thank you, sir. I will keep that in mind. you speak of. I told you it's a virtual role-playing game. It may be a little too complex for old people like you, to be honest. Old people? I'll have you know I am a respected veteran of the demonic wars, and you treat me like some doddering old fool. I tell you, young as these days, no respect. Well, saying things like youngins these days makes you sound pretty darn old, sir. Oh. You? What the hell are you doing here? Getting your liquor on first thing in the afternoon, I see. How lovely. <sighs> Do you have any idea what happened while you were getting plastered in here? What? Your father, Lord Laius, was killed! What? Don't play around. How can he be dead? He wouldn't just get killed like that. Your father was attacked by an assassin from the demon world. I was framed for the murder, so I had no choice but to flee Astral. Framed? The assassin probably disguised itself as me, so Lord Lias hardly fought back at all. Damn it! Where are you going? Forget about me. I'll deal with this myself. What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing, Radic. Is it about Seus? Ah. <sighs> well, don't beat yourself up over it. You don't have any control over him. I told Seus about Lord Lias' death because I had lost my temper. Now that I look back on it, it was a pretty heartless thing to do. Fia... I should have known better than anyone else how much pride he had in his father. It's not like you and Seus are never gonna see each other again. Fia, if you regret how you acted earlier, you still have a chance to make up for it later. Besides... It's not like he's the sort of guy who will die of depression from what you told him. That's true. I feel a little bit better now. Thanks, Roddick. Oh, 
erotic. What's wrong? You look down about something. I don't know. I feel like I'm always showing myself to you at my worst. Oh, don't be silly. I mean, Lord Lias was killed and I've been framed for his murder. All I've done is just whine about what could have been if Seas was there. I really hate myself for it. But when I finally saw him in that Portmouth bar, I said some things I really shouldn't have. It was really terrible of me. Fia? Well, I know you're at a bit of a mental crossroads here, but cheer up, okay? You can't expect to fight your enemies if you're plagued by self-doubt. You're right. I'm sorry. What is it, Roddick? Is there something bothering you? Um, listen, Yoshua. What was your sister like? I'm sorry if that's a personal question, but I was an only child, so I always wondered what was it like to have a sister. Oh, it's quite all right. Hmm. She was a bit of a tomboy, but I still thought she was adorable. She used to chase after me all the time, grabbing my clothes with her little hands. Aw, that sounds pretty cute. There was just one thing about her, though. If she ever got angry, she would sulk for hours. It was always a trial to make her feel better. Huh. We had an argument one time. I've forgotten what it was about. I managed to make Eris extremely angry, and she would not talk to me for a week. In fact, she wouldn't even look at me. She didn't want me anywhere near her. That kind of goes beyond sulking, I'd say. Oh, but she was just so adorable. You couldn't blame her for anything. brings back memories. Eris was like that when she was little. She used to sit on my lap whenever she wanted me to read to her. Sounds like a cute kid. Oh, she was. Back when I was still young, Eris liked to steal snacks and things from me. <laughs> she used to doodle on Father's symbology books and blame it on me. Father used to get so angry at me. Wow. <laughs> no matter where I went, Eris was always tagging along behind me. She'd always pull the feathers off of my wings, one at a time. Whoa, sounds painful. It was, but she was still my sister. She was so cute. You could never stay mad at her for very long. Eris, I want to know where you are. I'm going to save you, all right? Just promise you'll wait for me. Roddick, I had a dream yesterday about us before all this happened. Oh? What kind of dream? I dreamt that you, me, and Dorn were all having a great time together. Oh, yeah? But then Dorn wouldn't stop picking on me, and he made me really angry. Then you came, and... And you... Hmm, that's weird. I forgot the rest of it. It wasn't a bad dream, but I was crying when I woke up. Don't worry. I promise you that we'll save him. I'm here, you're here, and Dorn's still here. We just gotta do what we can for him, alright? You're right, Roddick. Oh, 
Oops, <laughs> you found me. What do you mean I found you? What are you doing here? Me? Oh, I was just wondering if you'd go find me if I turned up missing. Huh? Isn't it obvious? Of course I'd look for you. Really? Why, thanks, Roddick. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, a picture book. Oh, hey, Elia. Yeah, there was a picture book stuck in between the skill books. I remembered it from back when I was a kid, so I wound up reading it again. Are there any legends or fairy tales passed down in your world, Ilya? Oh, of course. Lots of them. Really? Like what? I'd love to hear some. Okay. Let me think of one you would like, Millie. How about the story of a poor little girl who winds up getting married to a handsome prince? Ooh, a prince. That sounds great. Hmm. Hope I still remember it all. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a pretty, sweet girl who lived with her father, her stepmother, and her two older stepsisters. Hmm. The girl's father died of an illness one day, and after that, her stepmother and stepsisters began treating her like a maid. Wickedly abused by her stepmother, the girl was made to wear rags like a peasant. Oh, that's terrible. Poor girl. Then one day, an invitation arrived from the castle. The prince was holding a ball to seek a bride for himself. Ooh, a ball? How romantic! The girl wanted to attend the ball, but her wicked stepmother laughed at her. Ha! Huh, do you think they'll let you into the castle dressed in those pauper's rags? How could she be so mean? The girl wound up tending to the house while the others were gone, softly crying to herself. Suddenly, a kind fairy godmother appeared and told her something amazing. Young girl, how would you like to go to the castle? A fairy godmother? Um, well, I guess you could think of her as a very strange and mysterious woman who can make all your wishes come true. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so jealous. I wish I could meet a fairy godmother someday. I don't think they exist in real life, sadly. They're just make-believe. But anyway, the fairy godmother cast a spell on a pumpkin and some mice who were nearby. Suddenly, the pumpkin turned into a coach and the mice into a team of beautiful white horses. Wow! The girl couldn't believe her eyes as the fairy godmother then went on to transform her rags into a stunning dress. She was already a beautiful girl, but with a new dress on, she looked every bit like a real princess. I have one more gift for you, the fairy godmother said. These are not magic, so they will never disappear. With that, she gave the girl a pair of glass slippers. Glass slippers? Goodness, that sounds beautiful. I'd love to try some of those on. <laughs> I bet you would. I doubt there's a girl in my world who hasn't fantasized about that. Anyway, the fairy godmother followed up the gift with a stern warning. My magic will fade away at the stroke of midnight. Make sure you return home not a single moment later. So it all disappears at midnight? I thought magic lasted forever. When the girl reached the castle, the other guests couldn't help but sigh at her dazzling beauty. The prince fell in love with her at first sight, and he immediately offered to dance with her. I know not which kingdom does your presence grace, he said, but may I have this dance? Oh, yes, of course, the girl shyly answered. <gasps> But the evening flew by in a flash, and before the girl knew it, the clock was already striking twelve. Oh no, that's when her magic goes away, isn't it? The girl ran out of the castle in a rush, but she lost one of her glass slippers in the process. The prince made chase, but was left standing outside dumbfounded, with the missing slipper in his hand. That's terrible. Several days later, a royal messenger arrived at the girl's house. The prince is searching for the owner of this glass slipper, he said. 
the one whom this slipper fits shall be chosen to become the prince's bride. Oh, wow, that's perfect. There couldn't be anyone else who'd fit in that slipper, could there? Ah, but the wicked stepmother and stepsisters locked the girl away from the messenger. The stepmother only allowed her own two daughters to try it on, claiming them to be the only maidens of the house. Oh, no! How could she? The stepsisters tried to fit the glass slipper on their feet. However, the slippers were made for someone with far smaller feet than theirs. It was quite impossible to put on. She must be nervous, the stepmother said. Let her try it on over in the other room. With that, they went inside. The stepmother then hacked the toes off of one of her daughters to make the slipper fit. <gasps> the stepsister put the slipper on her smaller foot and went back to the messenger. This must be the one, the messenger exclaimed, excitedly whisking her away from the house. Just then, however, a little bird exclaimed, She's a fake! The messenger took another look and was shocked to find that the glass slipper was covered in blood. Ew! I don't like stuff like that! Oh, but there's still more, Millie. Giving up on the stepsister, the messenger decided to return to the castle. Suddenly, he heard someone exclaim, Wait! Amazingly enough, it was the girl, still locked inside the house. And when she tried on the slipper, it was a perfect fit. The messenger was overjoyed. He placed the girl on a coach to the castle, and she and the prince were soon married. Oh, and they lived happily ever after, didn't they? Oh, yes. Her stepmother and wicked stepsisters were at the ceremony, of course. But the little bird who warned the messenger swooped down and pecked their eyes out and... Ah! Stop saying things like that! <laughs> I feel like taking a nap. Roddick! Roddick, where are you? What is it, Mother? Don't you what is it me? Hurry up and get the cooking started. Yes, right away. Yes, my sister. What do you need? Could you spot me some cash? Yes, right away. Roddick? Roddick? Where are you? Yes, my sister. What do you need? Yes, right away. Such a pitiful sight you are. I know. I've got just the surprise for you. And poof! Oh, Roddick, my love. We finally meet. I've come to take you away from all of this. Ronix! We'll hold the ceremony immediately. Come, let us return to my castle. 
I, uh, I... It's understandable that you're at a loss for words, Roddick, because I'm sure that no words could possibly describe just how happy you must be right now. But I, uh... You don't have to be so embarrassed. Though I must admit, your rosy cheeks only serve to make you all the more adorable. I... no! <laughs> Seeing the hair on your tail stand on end like that makes me feel all fuzzy inside. I love you, my dear widow kitten. <laughs> Pretty nice. What was that about earrings? Ooh, they're beautiful. Were these what you were talking about? Hey, isn't there something you should be doing? Huh? Wait a sec. Hmm? <gasps> Thank you, Roddick. Oh, I'll take good care of them. is tiring and that's how girls are at that age look a kitty cat hey Roddick let's give it a name how about Parichi then Parichi Likes it. We'll call it Parichi. the girl from the Velkent cave. Why'd you run off on us like that? I'm not telling. I work all by myself. I got only one friend. That. This? You mean this ocarina? Give it There, there. Stop crying. You just haven't had the chance to meet any friends yet, that's all. What about us? I'm sure we'd make good friends. My name's Roddick. Glad to see you again. And I'm Millie. Let's be friends, okay? What is it? What's going on?
What's the deal? What's up? Hmm, what is it? See? Look at all these people. All you have to do is just try and get to know them. It's really just that easy. Come on, why don't you join us? <laughs> I'm crying, but it feels different. Mm. Oh, no, never felt this way before. Boy, she loves you, doesn't she? I didn't know you were so popular, man. Radic is nice to me. Oh, I love him. Oh, come on. You don't have to go around like that. Parichi, could you, uh, would you mind getting off of me? It's kind of hard to walk like this. You can grab onto my cape if you like. Yay! I love you, Roddick! Yes, yes, thank you. I guess that's just the way Parichi is. Captain? Why are you staring at them like that? Feeling jealous? Huh? Oh, no, I, wa I wasn't staring. Come on, come on, we better get going. Don't want to get left behind, right? Crazy, everyone in town has monkey tails on them. They aren't monkey tails. We're Bellpool, cats. Oh, sorry. Speaking of which, I just noticed you don't have a tail, Novell. Uh. No, no, not that it matters or anything. Crazy, everyone in town has monkey tails on them. They aren't monkey tails. We're Bellpool. Cats. Oh, sorry. Well, that was awfully rude. We're all different, you know. Certainly. We've all got our own little idiosyncrasies. Something on your mind? It's about your tail. I was just thinking about what it would feel like if I were to hold it in my hands. What? Don't say stuff like that! Are you trying to embarrass us all? Is that embarrassing? Well, Millie didn't seem to mind too much when Elia was doing it. I... Well, I'm not her, okay? Okay. 